PlayStation 4 won't impose any new restrictions on the use of PS4 games. That was the big moment with Jack Tretton announcing that uh, Sony was going to support used games. He was on our stage this morning and said that's true for first party uh, games and the platform, but you know, third parties, who knows what they're going to end up doing within their own sort of systems and architectures. The gamers were up in arms about that. It's like people, this is such a hot button issue. But that moment, Jeff, when he, he said that, I mean, he got a standing ovation from the crowd. Yeah, it, um, ooh, it was crazy in there. Yeah. So I was about the fifth row. Uh, sitting there uh, watching all this unfold and so they, they mentioned at the, at the beginning of the press conference that they had uh, let fans line up to come to the show and right. I think I ended up in the section surrounded by a lot of those guys <laughs> because it was like old school Nintendo press gamer conference in belt there. Up yeah, in the was, yeah. People jumping out of their seats like Mosh they said Kingdom Hearts 3 there was a woman sounded like she was fainting next to me like it was <laughs> chaos up there. You know, it, I, like, I have not seen a reaction like that to things happening at a press conference right. in a very long time. And yeah. what was interesting to me is that, I mean, when you look at it, Sony didn't really announce that many games. I mean, there was Kingdom yeah. Hearts and there was The Order, but I mean, it wasn't a ton of first party studio games that they announced. They just really just told this story, I guess, about how we're for gamers and this system is for you. And then they dropped at the end that it's $399, which is going to be significantly cheaper than the competition. I mean, Andy, when you look at, you know, the way Sony handled it, how much of this do you think was the presentation of the way they approach it in the script and how, you know, Jack Tretton just, he seemed more honest than other folks. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I feel this is a trend from Sony for a while. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I actually uh, had a chance to hang out with them, and they, they talked about at GDC about how they were trying to listen. Right. But they were really trying to change the way they were. Because, I mean, if you look at the history of Sony, I mean, after PlayStation 2, they were at the top of the world. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, they owned it all, and they, they blew it. And right. they blew it with bravado, right? And this time, I think they, they sat back, and they said, we need to look at what consumers want, what developers want. And, and open up our doors to be the platform that people want it to be. And I think when you talk about the, the, the publishing model, letting pubs come in and do things, that's, that's taken from Apple. Do you know what I mean? When you, when you let guys self-publish. I mean, and that's it's the right thing to and do. And it's the right thing to do. And like, they're, they're going out, they're trying to say, what do gamers want? They've always supported with a ton of first party games. I mean, that's a history with Sony. Even through PlayStation 3, they had a lot of variety, yep. innovation, and new IP. You know, and, and I think that's the one that scares me about Microsoft. Microsoft shows up and says, we're spending a billion dollars on new, new IP, but will you be doing that in four years? Right. You know what I mean? And I think Sony has a history of doing that. They stood by that. They came out and said, this is what we did to make it better. You know, here's our box, here's our price. They, they haven't given really confusing, I think, you know, messaging. Yep. And I think that matters. I mean, I think that they're talking to people straight. And I, I think that ultimately is what's making them lead. And like I said, the listening part. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that matters. Like developers, when I talk to developers, developers are really excited about PlayStation 4. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. and, and when we talk to indie guys, indie guys, their eyes light up when they talk about PlayStation 4. And that's a groundswell. They've all got dev kits, yeah. and Microsoft won't return their calls. You know, it's, it's crazy. I, I mean, that, that matters. And yeah, indie's important. And yeah. it, you know, look at Angry Birds. Out of nowhere came this game that suddenly became a, a, a monumental title, or Clash of Clans. It doesn't take a 150 person team right. to make good content and by opening it up to indies you really give people the opportunity to find gems there's going to be a lot of turds yep. there's no question but there are going to be gems and i think the gamer wants variety what better variety than young people uh, often coming out of school often that are looking to do something utterly new How does and that have a very sound? different Maybe way of like a at naughty dog that worked out of an apartment. Yeah, back then. And, yeah, I, naughty you know, dog I mean, is a like, flip side now. It's a big organization that, right. that does I mean a fantastic game studio still, of course. Yeah. But but not about to do something completely off the wall. Who's making the next Indies wave of the warrior? That. You know, <laughs> like I said, some turds. <laughs> there are going to be turds. Uh, you some know, guys with cool yeah, the green screen yeah. right now. They're making it happen. And the thing is, too, is like you know, like big premium games are not going away. Like there's still going to be studios like Night Dog that make these ridiculous things that you can't make on your own. But it is, it's going to create a vacuum in the middle because there's going to be less because they're going to cost more and they're going to be bigger. And that vacuum in the middle is filled by indie and, and by guys. With those, is those are games that you're not ever going to buy in a store, you're never going to be trading them to your friend like yeah. the instructional video. People will be totally fine with that because they're just fun, small games at cheaper prices, as you said, Jason, that people want. And Sony really seems to be sort of embracing that as a model. I mean, Jason, you've been inside of Sony for many yes. years. You were there for some great years. And, and look, Kaz was running Sony Computer Entertainment yeah. uh, America when I was there. He's now running Sony. Yeah. Jack was there. The, it's the shoe was there. Yeah. It's the same uh, amazing people. Uh, the reason Jack comes off as genuine, he's a genuine guy. Yeah. He has been since the day I met him. That's an advantage on stage. He yeah. 
take everything else away, the difference in what they were saying, yeah. Jack is a very genuine guy, so that was going to come off well. Yeah. And in a, it, 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 he also had the advantage that in a world that is currently up in arms about change, has not had change explained to them, and frankly has had very frightening change uh, put in front of them, preaching not changing, yep. from a man who's very comfortable with himself and, and a great hardware uh, behind him, um, it's easy. It was yeah. a home run, right? And, and, and he did it. Right? Yeah. And unfortunately, I was in the car when the actual 25 <laughs> seconds of applause happened, so I feel like I, I missed a moment in history. But, right. but look, it's, Sony is doing a lot of things right, at least for the short term, they're doing a lot of things right. And the fact that the hardware isn't difficult to, to develop for, it right. isn't a, Mark Cerny's designing it, uh, worked with him since 1994, good friend. Um, it's the right hardware in the right platform with a great company. Yep. Um, you know, it's fantastic. Having said that, the part that I did get to see before I had to get in the car, uh, before they had a lot of people saying, before it started, it's not about TV, we're all about games, it's all about this. And then uh, Michael Lynn gets on and starts talking about movies made for gamers, right. scary, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> and then we hear about the red box uh, right. integration. Better messaging of what seems to me a very similar message. Yep. They are doing TV stuff. They do yep. have uh, an, an eye to the future. Um, better messaging. Right. Yeah. So when you look at Sony, what they did there, Jason, knowing them, I mean, how could they foul up here? I mean, it, they're obviously, you know, they're floating on cloud nine. This has been a great E3. I mean, where, what do they have to watch out for? Even when I was talking to Jack off stage, he's like, hey, this is a high point for us, but it's like, you know, this is a long, long, long marathon. What do they have to watch out for? Well, again, Jack has been there. He knows yeah. that as of yesterday, it sounds amazing for Sony, but yeah. Microsoft is a big company with deep pockets. They could come back and make a massive announcement, again, subsidizing the, the hardware yep. uh, in a way that doesn't make sense for Sony to match. Um, or, or, you know, I can't think of all the things right, that sure. they're going to think about, but something could change between now and then. I, I think Sony had a huge day uh, yesterday. Yep. Personally, I think it's great that there's two competitors. I want them yep. both to win. Um, I'm not a fan fanboy of either one of them, even mm -hmm. though I work for Sony, I have a lot of friends uh, at Microsoft. I, I'd like it to work out for both of them. The more they compete, the better it is for all of us as, as gamers. Yep. Um, we'll see, things do change. You know, you, you never know. They're building hardware. Building hardware is tough. You never know what's going to go on behind the scenes with the right. hardware between now and then. You're right, have two, you know, two strong competitors though, that's good for gamers.